it's, you know, back in October, October 27th, when the uh, deal was announced, you put out your uh, projections. And I just wonder, are you still expecting roughly $238 million in revenues in 2022 and $68 million in group adjusted EBITDA? Yeah, so so we reaffirmed our our our, um, our, our forecast in um, in the last um, uh, information that we put out, and you know the, the business is performing um, very well. It's performing as expected, and you know we're incredibly excited about um, you know completing the merger, completing the the transaction, going live on the New York Stock Exchange, and all the opportunity that that really brings to the business. Well, what opportunity does that bring to the business? So, um, you know, the, I mean, I've said it before, the reason that we that we wanted to go public, the reason we wanted to um, trade on the um, New York Stock Exchange was to give us access to paper and access to currency that really allows us to sort of supercharge our growth. Um, we think of growth in, in two pots. There's a lot of organic opportunity, increasing our technology um, uh, stack that we have, you know, driving fan engagement, really helping these sports leagues ac access revenue opportunities in the face of some really quite difficult um, conversations around um, sort of future broadcast revenues. And the other area we really think about is through um, inorganic growth, so acquisitions. There are lots of smart, interesting technology companies that really complement what we do and can really help our partners drive that growth and really access um, the future future markets and, and, and the future areas of uh, technology-driven solutions that they need to be thinking about. Yeah. For, for uh, people who may be watching, sort of focusing on your company for the first time, you know, I'm looking at what you sort of had as a comparable company benchmarking. I mean, you have names like TradeWeb and S&P Global, obviously, which are in info, information and data analytics. You've got online gaming and DraftKings. Kind of where do you see your, your company fitting in? So what we do as a business is we work with sports leagues and federations on a global basis, like the NFL, uh, and we provide them with technology in exchange for the right to collect and monetize that data. So, so once we've got that data, we, we, we provide that wrapped in software to sports books, effectively for outsourced bookmaking, but also into media companies as well. Um, so the revenue model we, we, we operate is, is really a mixture. We, we, we take a proportion of um, what's known as uh, gross gaming revenue or net gaming revenue from, from sports books. So effectively, we, we participate in the, uh, in the growth of the sports betting market. It's almost like you know, the, the, the rising tide lifts all boats. We're, we're part of that entire ecosystem and that entire infrastructure. But on top of that, our revenue model also provides provides us S, uh, software as a services um, type revenue model for, for other things that we provide around the data sector. Mark, it's Morgan. I, I want to get your thoughts on what we're seeing play out um, in Europe right now where soccer is concerned. I, I realize that Genius partners with the Premier League. Um, obviously, we just saw this Super League kind of come and, and essentially yeah. go in, in, in recent, recent days. Um, and while that might be the case, it, it does kind of shine a light on the economics and the business models and whether they've worked or not, uh, where soccer, at least European soccer, is concerned. How are you thinking about it? What does that mean in terms of your business? Sure. I mean, look, there's, there's been conversations around uh, the, the, the Super League since, I don't know, the 90s. And, and I think, you know, while COVID's exacerbated the problems, I mean, what this is really doing is exactly, as you say, bringing into focus the, the issues around how sport is funded. I mean, there's there's a lot of change, a lot of dynamic uh, situations going on at the moment with, um, you know, some of the uh, future broadcast revenues, how it's going to work. And, and in Europe, the way the way that the sports leagues operate um, is slightly different to the States. And, and, and it really has uh, sort of brought into focus and really uh, made people think about how uh, revenue is going to be driven in, in, a, in, a, in, in the future. From our point of view, we see it as an opportunity. You know, we, we're a technology company. We partner with sport leagues. And our raising debt, what we do is, is really help those sports leagues access that revenue pools. You know, we do it in the sports betting sector. We do it in the media sector. We do it in the streaming sector. We allow those, allow those sports leagues to really maximize the revenue potential that they can, that, that they can um, have from their, from their product, which is obviously putting on sporting events. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.